from Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. On me, shine on me, let the light from the lighthouse shine on me, shine. From your lighthouse, shine on, on me. Yes, sir. Gracious God, we Hallelujah. thank you now for this blessed opportunity to stand before these, your people. Touch now these lips of clay of mine that I might be able to deliver your unadulterated gospel. Touch the hearts and the minds of those who are in the congregation and those who are viewing online. Touch this, your preacher. Make preaching easy. Let anything that is said and done noteworthy of any praise be given back unto you. For it is in that matchless, that marvelous, and magnificent name of Jesus, who is the Christ, we pray. Amen. I greet you all this afternoon for those that are here in Sante Chapel and for those of our colleagues um, in Bethlehem at Moravian and others who are on Zoom or Facebook, um, we greet you this afternoon and uh, we thank you, Dr. Uh, Williams, for letting me be the first um, in the lineup um, for Black <laughs> History. And, and I realized probably why you did it, because I'm glad, because after all these other prolific preachers come, you will forget that I was even here. <laughs> so I'm glad I am first. I do not want to be sitting there waiting for my turn. So I am just honored and grateful to be able to stand once again and deliver God's word to God's people. Will you walk with me around this text this afternoon? If I had to give this um, sermon, the title, I will call it Praise Helper. And I'd start off with, does anybody here remember Hamburger Helper? <laughs> I, I believe around 1971, at the tender age of 11, uh, my mom would use Hamburger Helper to kind of spice up, or oh, y'all bougie, y'all don't know about that, okay. It spices up the, the, the hamburgers that we would have at dinner time or lunch time. And 
when, when, when I look at Psalm 111, it, it reminds me of Hamburger Helper. Now listen, because what I mean is if your praise needs a little help, this psalm will do it. If you need a reason to praise the Lord, this psalm is one of the psalms that you need to visit. Because Psalm 111 is, is, is a hymn of praise that celebrates the greatness and the goodness of God. Something that is sadly missing in our world today. You know, a lot of our self-help strategies do not include God. For example, if you want to lose weight, take these gummies or these pills. What's missing? God. You want to grow your church? Follow these eight steps. What's missing? God. And we, we live in a narcissistic society where it appears that everything is about us. Even sadly, when it comes to church service, you know, our worship should not be about us, but it should be about pleasing God. Um, there's a story, and it's, it's a true story of this um, preacher, black preacher, that was at the convention, and, and in my tradition, the one place you don't want to flunk is at the convention, oh my God. When, when you get on the convention floor. And so oh this young preacher, no names being called, um, preached, and he, he dunked the house. And when we say dunk the house, in my tradition, that means you really preach. Um, and everybody was on their feet. They were clapping and they were shouting and they were rolling on the floor. And when it was over, the colleagues came around and said, Doc, we, we call everybody Doc. You can have a high school Doc. diploma, but we're going to call you Doc. They said, Doc, why aren't you happy? You, you, you dunked the house. And everybody was on their feet. He said, no, not everybody. He said, there was one man that was still sitting. And he said, well, why are you worried about that one man that was sitting? He said, because that one man was my teacher. And so I wonder on Sunday, in our worship, is God pleased? Everybody else is shouting, but is God shouting? Is God pleased with our worship when we leave? This psalm is an acrostic, and you all know that I'm in the seminary, uh, meaning that each line begins with a successive letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which is indicating the psalmist's intention to offer a complete and a comprehensive praise of God. Psalm 111, to me, is a wonderful hymn of praise that celebrates the greatness of God and the way that God acts on behalf of God's people. The psalmist begins by declaring that he's going to give thanks to the Lord with his whole heart in the company of the upright and then in the congregation. And then the psalmist goes on to proceed to list some of the ways that God has demonstrated God's greatness and faithfulness. And can I put a quick pin in here? Sometimes we don't need a fresh revelation. Sometimes all we need is a flashback. Well, what am I saying? Because if God did it before, he can do it again. And sometimes all we need to do is just think back to what God has already done. Amen. And when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul shouts hallelujah. I thank God for praising me. So, so the psalmist does a wonderful job of really just taking our minds back to the good works that God did on behalf of his people um, in Exodus through Joshua. And there's references all through those verses that were read this afternoon just to remind us of what God did for God's people. 
And when you think about what God has done, I don't care where you are, you're going to break out in praise. When you think about where God has brought you from, I don't care how sedity you might be, you're going to give God some <laughs> praise. Because if he did it once, he can do it again. So the psalmist is asking, do you study those wondrous works of God? Because they're written down in the book for those that they can be studied by those that love him. And in other words, if you love someone, you pay attention to every detail. Y'all remember when you were dating? You remember everything about the one you're dating. You remember everything. And that's the way it ought to be when you're studying God's word. When you're in love with the Lord, you're remembering all the little details. Oh, just the way they held your hand. Oh, just the way they looked at you. Or just the way they opened the car door for you. You remember the little things. And the same way ought to be when you think about the goodness and the greatness of God. Psalmist says, do you remember how God remembered his promise to Abraham when Pharaoh had forgotten about the saving deeds of Joseph? Or how the Lord of hosts assaulted Egypt's gods with a battalion of bugs and boils and fiery hell? Or do you remember how he baked Pharaoh's heart into a hardened clay pot and then shattered it um, beneath the wall of water? Or how at his signal the earth and the sea was swallowed and the horse and the riders as a whole. Do you remember when God's people grumbled because they were hungry and God fed them with some bread from heaven? Or do you remember when they groaned how thirsty they were and somehow God squeezed water out of a rock? Do you remember God's promise to Abraham and the promise of blessing his offsprings and the land of his people? Do you remember how God leveled a city with a marching band, but not before God saved a little prostitute who by grace had come to fear and to believe? Then God led them into a land that flowed with milk and honey and gave them rest. But wait a minute. If your praise needs a little more help, we're not just supposed to remember those wondrous deeds. The psalm is not merely about the past, but it directs us toward the future. In other words, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all he's done for me my soul cries out hallelujah i thank god for saving me yeah when we think about what god has done it's not just in the past but we also ought to think about the future things that god's going to do it says his god's righteousness endures forever that God remembers God's covenant, that God's precepts are established and God's commands of the, he commands the covenant forever and God's praise endures forever. And so these things that are forever simply remind us that there are greater works yet to come works that we also will do well to remember and study and delight. In other words, if you think what God has done for me today is something, just wait till tomorrow. Why? Because he keeps on doing great things for me. He keeps on doing great things for me well if i had ten thousand tongues oh i'd praise him praise him with everyone 
Yeah, so when I think of the goodness of the Lord, because God keeps doing great things for me. Yes, sir. He, he, he doesn't stop. He keeps doing it. And I love it because we don't look like where God brought us from. Matter of fact, all of us came from somewhere. And if you told your neighbor where God really delivered you from, they may not want to sit next to you. And if I told you where God really delivered me from, you may not want to hear me preach. And if I knew what he delivered you from, I may not want to preach to you either. <laughs> so do you remember what God has done for you? Barbara Streisand wrote a song about memories. Oh. I can't get that tune, so I'm not going to try it. Memories. Like the corners of my mind, misty water memories of the way we were. What has the Lord done for you? What has the Lord helped you do? Maybe if you're a student, you finally passed one of your professor's exams. Or maybe close to the end of the term, you finally got that assignment completed. Or maybe, just maybe, you just figured out how to use Canvas. <laughs> Give God some praise. You're a professor, you're a staff or admin, maybe getting through all of these self study groups or finally understanding this new curriculum. Give God some praise. But for African American Christians, this psalm is a reminder of the many ways that God has demonstrated God's faithfulness throughout history. From the days of slavery to the civil rights movement, and beyond. God has been a constant source of strength and comfort for his people. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad trouble don't last always. I'm so glad mm, trouble don't last always. So then, as I reflect on Psalms 111, verses 7 and 8, I'm reminded of the greatness and the goodness of God. This, this psalm speaks of God's faithfulness and God's righteousness and how God's precepts are trustworthy and steadfast. In other words, you can count on it. If God said it, that's all that is needed. They used to say, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. But now it's simply if God says it, that settles it. As we hear politicians, they change from one time to the other. But with God, whatever God said, God meant what God said, and God's precepts are trustworthy and steadfast. Oh, that's a reason to praise the Lord. It's, it's a reminder that God's love and God's grace, they're available not just to some, but to all of us, regardless of our faith or our background. Yeah, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I don't know about you, but my soul cries out, hallelujah, I thank God for saving me. What Christ did, what God did for us, those precepts, and it don't matter if you like it or not, or like me or not, or like your neighbor or not, God made provisions for all of us. And to me, that's good news. And as an interfaith community, we, we can, beloved, come together and appreciate the beauty and the richness of the different spiritual traditions. We can, if we look hard enough, find common ground in the belief that God is merciful and just and that we are all called to live with integrity 
and with compassion. So as you remember, and as you remember, and as you remember, and as you remember, and as all of us remember, we, we can collectively lift up our voices toward heaven and sing that song we just sung earlier. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies yes, God. I see. You see, beloved, in a world that is often divided, let us seek to foster unity and understanding among all people. May we be inspired by the words in this song to live with gratitude and humility and to recognize that divine spark within each and every one of us. If you need a little bit of praise helper to give you something to praise God for, I invite you to Psalms 111. It'll be just like hamburger helper. It'll make the same old hamburger taste just a little bit different. Yeah, it'll, it'll make you wave your hand. It'll, it'll put a new pep in your step when, when you just think about what the Lord has done. And when I say thank you and when you say thank you, you don't know and I don't know what you're thanking God for. Because like the alabaster box, you don't know the cost of my praise. You don't know why I'm praising God. You don't know why somebody is saying thank you, Lord. But when we think about his precepts, and all that he's done and his, what he's done for us and that they're steadfast, that's enough for us to lift up holy hands and just simply tell the Lord, thank you for what you've done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. It's a simple song. Let's try it again. Thank you, Lord. Mm, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So may it be so.